Uh, shoot. This is the one that I failed. We're in case three. Infamy. What? Is that a bomb? Okay. Let's play. Let's play a game. We had just started. Oh, it should be Gucci. I know how to solve uh, the case now. When you, uh, when you get the correct deduction, or to get the correct conclusion, you do the right deductions. Gives you a different type of cutscene. Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. No, you're not. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, you know, the star of American theatre, <laughs> and he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. Um... No, let's propose another solution. Why don't you stay with Mrs. Hudson? Oh, but Miss Caitlin has more in common with Miss Alice, and they uh, get along she's gonna so be, well. She's going to be bad. Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. <laughs> pig-headed? Bitch, please. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will. Brains. Yeah, he's an American. Oh my god, he looks like a vampire. What is up with his face? What is this? What's up with his face? Build a character portrait. I know. This. America. He's American. He is proud. Proud to be an American. <laughs> uh, tobacco, Holmes' preferred brand. Oh, it's Holmes's preferred brand. Orson Wild. Inscription. Personalized boots. Is it a painted mustache? Right? He, there are vampires. He's wearing riding pants. Pocket watch. I think he's self-affected. Is it to like look at himself? Oh. What is he hiding? Follows fashion trends. There's nothing I can say about his face. Oh, it is a painted on mustache, isn't it? It's a porn stash. Um, personalized boots shows fashion trends. Um, do you think he wants to attract attention? Probably. I'm gonna validate. It's probably gonna be wrong. Imprecise, of course. Orson Wilde, not yet 30 years of age, is the star of American theater who came to London to study the role of Sherlock Holmes. It is probable that he began his study previously. He smokes the same brand of tobacco as Holmes. Orson is narcissistic and follows fashion. He admires his own reflection. He wears a brooch with the American flag to attract attention. Okay, I don't think that's right. I think the American... Uh, the brooch, I think, is uh, just to show American pride. The lack of his dick. <laughs> that close up though. Mr. Wild, your room. Charming. Dude, he's huh. so disgusting. This is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wild. Come on. Come back. Hi, Birdie. Pretty sleeping. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> 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 a vampire Orson Wilde 
God damn, he... <laughs> he brought in a lot of, uh... Items. He got his own poster. Honestly, the level of narcissism. Yeah. Oh, it is paint that he's wearing. <clears throat> While Trudy has a perfect disguise kit, do actors really need all this? Need? Oh. Am I looking at the brand? Oh gosh. This must be grease paint. Is that why he's so pale? Oh. I use the same brushes for makeup. He does? <laughs> Hashtag Mirka, right? It's proud to be an American. Powder. It has to be powder. Face powder of an excellent quality. <coughs> Son of a bitch! I forgot my hat. <laughs> Father? I'm Shut up. just checking. Um. You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? <laughs> uh, it. Uh, it's cocaine. Be, uh, practicing my disguises. You know me. <sighs> it's cocaine, love. No, I'm not done in that room yet. <gasps> don't, don't touch that! No, no. Checkmate. You. Ah. What did he blow up? Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Unfamiliar step. Heels in a hurry. Indecision. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. The actor sounds so like Dandelion. Wild was a druggie? Really? I mean, he... Os what was his name? Oscar Wilde? Is he an actual dude? Uh, what's up with her nose? Got a broken nose. Often, oh, wears spectacles. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Expensive brooch. She is rich. She's engaged. Or it could be a family heirloom. I'm gonna go with engagement ring. Oh, wait a minute. She's got different color shoes on. Didn't notice her boots. Often wear spectacles. She has an engagement ring. She's rich. Uh, I don't think she's flashy. And maybe this is an heirloom. Let's go with family heirloom. Damn it! <laughs> Not qualified for science, sir. <laughs> Put the heroin down. A Mary Sutherland is a good-tempered young lady of 25 years of age. She has poor eyesight, has failed to notice that she is wearing mismatched boots. Mary is a wealthy young lady, and her ring is... It's not... Um, I got that wrong. An American star of the stage visits Sherlock Holmes in order to study his new role when a curious incident in the nighttime throws the pair into a case. What will this unusual duo discover? Oh no. <laughs> He's going to go around with us. <laughs> Oscar Wilde was a gay and lush writer. His, this writer is a different person. Okay. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father. Although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes. Although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger Watch than him. herself. He's imitating. He's uh, imitating Holmes. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? See? I met him at the Gasfitters Ball. <laughs> Mr. Winderbank did not wish for me a mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. 
Unfortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together. But then father returned, and we could no longer meet. Ah, oh, Romeo and Juliet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything mm, of sometimes that sort. talking to the character. He used to is say that a woman should be happy in her own family evaluation. Uh. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, father was going off again in a week, and Hosmer wrote and said Hosmer's that it would be better for us not to see each other until father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Uh. Were you engaged? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned. In Uncle Auckland. Ned! Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. <laughs> well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Mm, okay. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? <laughs> he's a very shy man. Luna, he's annoying as He would me. rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha, a love letter. Oh, hmm, you little yes. son of a bitch. I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. <laughs> What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes. Tell her. I've got cocaine on my nose. Uh, I'm not gonna tell her anything. Mr. Holmes, what do you think about the letter on the table? Do you think it might help? A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? Doesn't that kind of sound- it sound, almost sounds like Dandelion. Public notice of disappearance. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Hosmer Angel has mysteriously vanished. Mr. Angel is around 5 feet 7 inches in height of strong build with a sallow complexion. He has black hair with bushy side whiskers and a mustache. He is likely to be wearing tinted spectacles. On last sighting, Mr. Angel was dressed in a black silk frock coat uh, with a black waistcoat and gray Harris tweed trousers. He is known to have been employed in an office in Lindenhall Street. If you are in possession of any information, please come forward. There will be a reward for any help given in finding this gentleman. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sounds like a younger and more asshole dandelion. <sighs> My dear love. Please don't worry, your sweet head. Do you believe that I would say anything to your family who understand nothing of love? We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Such a short time, but it was enough for me to know that you are my life. I want to spend every minute from now on with you. I wish that it were possible. I love you very much. And an ampersand. I am waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more upon his travels so we can meet again. Oh, Halsmer Angel. He's a beautiful. He's beautiful. This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. Yeah, seems a little weird. Whoa. Concentrate your attention on finding the details that others are more inclined to overlook. Good quality paper, quite smooth. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Is that it? Uh... Oh. Oh. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Sounds like we found this episode's vampire. Yeah, exactly. I love your money very much. <laughs> Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. 
seems Let's very... Let's study this uh, letter more closely. Osmer Angel. Oh, there's a period. Oh. There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? DM. Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. A minute. Uh, this is gonna be from... Oh, this isn't even gonna be from Mr. Angel. This is gonna be from her father. <gasps> the stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Mm-hmm. So he's got a signature. Dear Mary, I'm taking the opportunity of sending you these few lines in the hope that they find you and your mother in good health. France is a nice country look at, but it is the same as anywhere. There are rogues here who deceive and mistreat their women. Nowadays, uh, men nowadays are so dishonorable, they won't think twice to break your heart. Mm -hmm. I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm -hmm. Take my advice. Stay at home. I'll be back before long. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Cosmer Angel and stepdaddy are the same. It could be that stepdaddy has found out about Hosmer. Okay, so this is different. This is expensive. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Oh, maybe. Oh, light. Never mind. Fairly common ink. Nothing special. So it's the same. Let's study this letter more closely. The M. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further uh. attention. M. This letter has a defect? M. Ah, and it's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. What about the K? Uh, where's the K? Is there an OK over here? OK. The ampersand. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match. It's the, the same, same type of writer. <clears throat> Is there really no K here? Father. Gotta be something that's. Yes, the K. One more letter with a defect. Where is the K over here? Oh gosh. There's probably like just one. Just one K. There we go. Another letter <laughs> match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So... Uh... Stepfather's letter and Hosmer Angel's letter, they were written by the same person. Letters have the same typewriter defects and were written by the one person on a single typewriter. Totally. I mean, that makes sense. And then... Dints for different boots. Mary has poor eyesight. Probably myopia. What is that? Nearsightedness? Yeah, the and and the K. Or the ampersand and the K. Uh, work travels and kept at home. Mary had the opportunity to socialize without her stepfather's knowledge. And... Secretive character. Mr. Hosmer Angel is rather secretive about his life. Mary doesn't even know where he lives. For travels. Dang, this is a lot of clues. For some reason, Hosmer Angel met with Mary only when her stepfather was away. And Mary's stepfather was unaware of her relationship. Cosmer Angel was a, a shy man who did not cause want to cause trouble for Mary. They only met when they were gone. When she was gone. Mm -hmm. Dang, I can't believe we already have this many clues. Mary's stepfather took his business trip 
which gave Mary the opportunity to secretly mate, or Mary's stepfather lied he didn't take his business trip as he found out that Mary was disobeying him. <clears throat> Doesn't realize the guy is her stepfather, you think, maybe? He's in a disguise, or... He just thinks that she's a liar. Or that he, he is a liar because he didn't actually go on trips. Mary's- oh wait, Mary's income? The family have an interest in Mary remaining single as they have access to inheritance. Mary and her stepfather trusted one another. Mary was told to remain at home as her stepfather believed it would be better for her. That could be, but let's just do cons let's go with concern. Oh no? They want her to be single? Oh. Mr. Winniebeck is Mr. Angel, right? Oh, hey, TP, how's it going? Dude, this could be. Could this be the end? No. No. You can't start something and then just be done. Thanks to Wild, my analysis <clears throat> table has been completely destroyed. Uh, well, thanks, bro. Where's Toby? There he is. Poor guy. Oh, come on, Toby. Your soap bath couldn't have been <laughs> as bad as that. She's blind and can't tell one from boot from the other. Oh, yeah, that's true. It could be her stepfather. I bet it is. What's this? Mr. Holmes, my name is Tabitha Folk. I am one of the nurses who attends the inmates at Westgate Prison. I took care of Mr. Albiot, who asked me to write you after his death. <coughs> Excuse me. I took care of him. Um, he, remains, he remained furious right up to the end and refused to ask God for forgiveness. He blamed you, Mr. Holmes, for breaking his will. It was so sad to see. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it's kind of neat how uh, we get the letters back. Shoot, I can't look at his stuff while he's in here. Dang it. Go get change. Uh, what's been happening? We just started this case. So not much has happened. Uh, we were playing Overwatch earlier. <laughs> we have her. I had a lot, a lot of fun getting your ass kicked. Well, my ass kicked. Some chick is marrying your stepdad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the case is that her stepfather used to go away on trips and she started meeting up with this kid or this guy only when he was away. So, uh... What? Can we get rid of the cocaine on your face, please? Yeah, I guess we can wear the overcoat. I want to wear the glasses and the top hats. Oh no, he looked good bald. Let's go with the bowling hat. I think that's what it's called. Hey, welcome back, Tenny. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Finally able to make it. <laughs> I bet it's nice to relax, chill. Okay. Uh, there's no way that this is done. It has, it must be. Okay, Mr. Windybank is Mr. Angel. It will cause Mary a great deal of distress if she is told the true identity of Hosmer Angel, or Mary is an honest and gentle young lady who should be allowed to live her own life. She does not deserve a dis uh, to be deceived. Let's tell her. A pastor outfit with a cocaine face. Okay, we'll go change in a second. We can always change our choices, but I think she deserves. You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money. 
and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. This is bad. Thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes, you could have been more diplomatic. Oh, so we don't get to uh, replay that decision. <laughs>